Good morning. Please stand as you're able, and I invite you to join us in our opening hymn, number 128, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. here and it is a pleasure to worship with you this day. Uh, we will be continuing our sermon series on looking for direction as Amy will wrap up um, some great, great advice for us today and directions based on uh, a scripture from Isaiah 40. And so I hope that you'll prepare your hearts for worship um, this morning. If you are visiting with us or if you are here for the first time, we want to connect with you. And a way that we do that is through a connect card and it's in your pew or you have a QR code on your bulletin. You can scan it with your uh, phone camera and it'll come up to a website and we get just a little bit of information, name, phone number, email, uh, nothing major. We will not spam you. We will not be at your doorstep, but we will connect with you. We want um, you to be, feel like you're welcome here, but also we want you to have a direct communication link to us so that you can find out more about our church, how you can get involved, um, and how you can serve, and what, what we believe and who we are as a church here at St. Luke. So I invite you to take a moment to do that if you are a guest with us. We do have a gift for you, so I hope that you'll stop by the welcome desk and pick up a gift from us. It is a free thing. It's just a thank you for visiting and for um, worshiping with us today. And so in the life of our church, uh, one way that we do life together is through prayer. Uh, prayer is essential and is a means of grace in which we connect with God and we also intercede on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so um, that is something really significant to us here at St. Luke's. We have a wonderful prayer team. So if you would like to lift up someone in prayer, we have prayer cards in the pew or you can go to our website and lift up one there as well. 
You can mark them private for pastors only. You can put them to our intercessory prayer team, or you can have them designated to go to the prayer list, which is for the whole congregation to pray for one another. So um, I invite you to take time during the service to write down any prayers that you might have. Let us go before the Lord now and uh, share our hearts and our minds and lift up those names that we might carry with us today. Almighty God, we come into a time of presence with your Holy Spirit. May it fall afresh on us this day as we celebrate the, the chance and the opportunity to come together with, with one another in community, to be able to lift up the things of our week and to be able to celebrate where we've seen you at work in our lives and in our community. Lord, we celebrate one another that we see, that we may not get to see on a weekly basis, but that we get to commune together. And today, oh God, we are so thankful that we get to come into a place where we get to break bread together and that we get to experience your prevenient and justifying grace, that grace that goes before us and that grace that opens our heart to receive the gift of love and forgiveness that you only offer. And so, God, we, we are so grateful for that. But, Lord, in, um, as we look to our week, as we look inward into our lives, we know that it's not always grateful. It's not always things that are, um, that are happy. There's things that we struggle with. And so, God, as we lean in, we, we, we pray, Lord, that we lean into your word when we are weary and when we falter and when we are heavy um, with heartfelt concern for, for another person or a situation. Lord, we know that you are the only place that will comfort us, that will guide us, but also relieve that worry. You're the place that gives us instruction. You're the, you're the one and only that can provide the comfort that we need in those times and provide answers and clarity so that we might walk forward. And so, God, we pray for those in the midst of those situations and we pray for those that have heavy things on their hearts this day that we lean in with great, great faith that you might answer us, that you might guide our steps. But Lord, we also lean in with patience to listen and be present to be able to hear that still, small voice. Lord, as Amy is going to bring a message about what it means to walk forward in you with you, we pray, oh God, that you'll open us up a little bit further that we might look deep within us to the places where you might be calling, that those places in life that are very at tension with something else, so that we might prompt toward or move toward you. The ways that you would have us to go where there's not that tension anymore, but bring clarity of our next steps to grow further in our walk with you. And Lord, as we saw on the news yesterday about a balloon and, and so many other things, and then there's ball games and there's all the things of life and there's shootings and there's hurting and there's grief and there's so much going on. Lord, we know that our human mind cannot comprehend it all. And we don't have the answers or the questions. But Lord, this is the, in those times we can lean on your promises, seek your word, and walk in hope that you are working despite the harm and the situations you are at work in all things. 
And so, Lord, as we worship together, let us remember that you are present with us as well. We lift up the situations where hope is needed. We lift up the situation where grief is so overwhelming that life just seems to fade away. Lord, we lift up those situations and the people who are struggling with what's happening in our communities, the harm that's being done, and the presence of evil among us. Lord, you tell us that you were present, that you conquered the grave, and in that you remind us that you conquered the evil one. And so when we doubt and when we see things, help us to lean fast and stand steadfast on your love and your promises that you yet again will conquer the evil things of this world. Help us to be patient in those times where we don't understand. And Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful that you allow us to come to you with any words that we have to say or even with our silence. And we pray, oh God, the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, today, this afternoon, this building hopefully will be full of parents and grandparents and guardians. And some of you in this room, teachers and students 13 years and older. As we lean in to help parents understand what does it mean to uh, keep your kids safe on uh, the internet, whether it's gaming or a tablet or a computer, um, we know that harm is just a click away. And we wanna make sure that we do every part to connect with our parents and our community to allow safe space for education and for holy conversation to take place. So today at three, if you are um, would love to come out, it's called Just a Click Away. We have a presenter that's coming to present some really helpful tips and information around safety on the internet with our students. And so uh, this place will be transformed uh, in just a little bit. And it's because of your gifts and your giving that we're able to take um, the word of God through fellowship and um, continuing to grow together in knowledge uh, to, to the community. And so thank you for your gifts. Thank you for uh, providing and being present um, in that way uh, with the church. And so with that, I want to offer a time uh, for us to go to God in generosity with our time, our presence, our gifts, and our service.
share together in an affirmation of faith, which simply means we're going to speak aloud words that proclaim what we believe. And I'm going to invite you to join me in that through the Apostles' Creed. And so let us share together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I extend that same welcome that Pastor Monica offered this morning as we come together in worship. Uh, my name is Amy Spivey, and I am also privileged to be a part of ministry and serving alongside uh, this community of St. Luke's. Um, and I hope that um, you all will feel welcome, but if you particularly are newer to St. Luke's and would like to learn more, to get to know Pastor Monica and me a little bit better, maybe you're wanting to learn a bit, little bit more about our ministry directly after worship today, we would love to give you an opportunity to um, meet. Uh, so if you would like to have lunch and learn a little bit more, then you can meet us over in the building just off to my left, which is our administration building, and we're going to be meeting for lunch in the conference room. So we would welcome you. You do not have to have said um, that you were coming. We uh, don't need an RSVP from you today. We would welcome you to come. Um, we always have plenty of food, um, and, and we would welcome you to come and join us. I know uh, there will be a few folks from our um, 9 o'clock service who will be coming for that as well, so come and join us for um, lunch. Well, as we come together for worship, we, we always want to make sure that we are lifting into this time uh, the word that, that God offers us in Scripture. Now, throughout the month of January, um, in the brand new year, which I realize it's not a brand new year anymore, is it? I mean, we're now in February, uh, but we wanted in the new year to think about where we were going, where are we going, and how are we going to get there? So we've been looking for direction in this sermon series, and so we are going to round that out today. One of the things that we really wanted to do is to help us to think about what are the, what I have called mile markers in our lives that help us to, to know where we are going. Um, how are we engaging in things in our spiritual lives that are helping us to take one step and another step forward in our faith with God. Now, specifically for us, that has meant we've looked at worship and prayer and study and serving and giving. I know Pastor Monica shared with us last week a reflection on serving and giving, and she uh, so poignantly helped us to think about what it means to, for our hearts to, to turn around towards God. So what, it, what does it mean for us to, to have healthy spiritual lives? What does that look like? So we've wanted to lift those things up. Now, you might be thinking, I missed out on worship and prayer. I haven't been here every Sunday. That is okay. Um, we want you to think about it today, but you can also, if you want, go to our YouTube channel, St. Luke's UMC Hickory. You can look at the sermons from January up until, to, um, up until now, and you can catch up. You can li listen and learn through that. 
And then hopefully when you do that, you too can find a way to gauge where am I going and how do I get there. Uh, so I want us to think today about how we might create a way forward for ourselves in a, a tangible way going forward. And I think the word that I'm going to share from Scripture is an encouraging word. Now, in the very beginning of this series, I started in Isaiah 40. At the very first verse, the very first part of that chapter that uh, says, make a way in the wilderness for the Lord. Right? Make a way for the Lord. So I want to share with you today the closing words of Isaiah 40 uh, that tell us a little more about what happens when we are willing to make a way for the Lord in our lives. Okay, so here, Isaiah 40, beginning at verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may we hear your word. May it fall afresh on us. May we be open in our hearts and our minds to receive it today so that we might move in your direction, that we might be encouraged God, in our lives of faith. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. So just a little bit of context about Isaiah 40. Um, Isaiah is a book of the prophet. Um, a word that would have in some way come to the people. It's probably a compilation Isaiah, the, the book that we know it to be, a compilation of different aspects of a prophetic word that it would have come to God's people. For Isaiah 40, the context is probably that the people are far from home. They may even feel lost and far away from God. So what that means historically is that they would have not been in the land that they claimed and known, but the chaos of, of life and the conflict of the world would have pushed them out into an unknown land, probably around the Babylonian um, area, and they would have um, truly been people who would have needed direction. Truly. Probably, if they're feeling lost and far from home, they are exiled. Then a word from the prophet would have been needed, would have been necessary, would have been uh, timely and important for them. So in that context, we hear these words from Isaiah 40. Right, People who need to know that God has not left them alone. That even though they're far from home, their God is not far away. So these are the words that come to them. Right? People who hear the prophets say, make a way for the Lord. Make a way. Because God has not left you behind. And 
guess what? When you make a way for the Lord, when you anticipate the presence of God, when you expect that God will be with you, then what we have heard in Isaiah 40, 28 to 31 is the encouragement that is brought to the people. And I want us to look specifically at verse 31. Right, we see this description um, that God does not grow faint or weary. Right, that God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. And in 31 it says this, Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. So as we are people who take one step and another step in farther into 2023, as people who are looking for direction, this word is a word that is intended to offer encouragement that God is with us. That when we are willing to go, God will give us strength. See, because, because God's people then, and even God's people now, find themselves weary and faint at times in life right? Like taking a step forward some days is much harder than others. And I don't have any idea what your experience of life is today or what is on the horizon for you. I don't know specifically what your goals might be or your dreams might be going forward or, or where you think God is, is leading you. But what we know from the words of the prophet is, is that we can trust that God will meet us where we are going. And in fact, verse 31 says, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. So wherever we are going, if we anticipate that God will meet us, that God goes with us, then maybe we will find strength to go forward. Now the interesting thing about that word wait is that it's not really the, the idea of waiting that maybe we sometimes think about on a day-to-day -day kind of understanding. I think about when we wait at the uh, airport at our gate for a plane Right, we find a seat, we navigate the crowd, and we sit, we sit back and we wait. Right, we wait for the, the voices to come over the intercom, and we sit back and we wait. And we wait, right? That's not the kind of waiting that this particular text is, is indicating. There's a different nuance to the understanding of this word wait. Right? It's literally, if you look at that word in Hebrew, it literally is uh, to stretch. Right? To, to stretch. And you can think about that logically if you're, if you're waiting, if something is being, is being stretched out. But really, it's about longing for something. It's not really about sitting back and just waiting. It's about longing for something. Right? It's almost as if in waiting, you're moving closer to God. Right? It's more of an anticipation or a hope. Right? If you're longing for something, it means that, that something is, is pulling you forward. It's not causing you to sit back. And wait. It's almost like it's pulling you forward. So I'd like to think that this, this notion of waiting for the Lord is more of an active hope. 
right? This, this active hope of expectation and anticipation and of trust and confidence that, that, that the waiting is not in vain, right? This active hope. It's not, it's not a passive waiting. It's an active hope, right? Stretching us towards God. So what I'd like for us to think about, to, to round out this, the, 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 the thoughts and reflections we've been offering about seeking God, about having a healthy spiritual life that's going to lead us in a direction so that we know where we are going and how we're going to get there, I'd like for us to think about what it means to to, to live an active hope, right? To actively seek God who we can trust and in whom we can have confidence, right? But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. So if we live in an active hope, not a passive waiting, but an active hope, it means that, that we're going to be able to trust and have confidence in God who's going to give us strength. To take the next step. And then guess what after that? Those who wait for the Lord shall mount up with wings like eagles. Wow, not only are we going to have strength, but we're going to soar. We're going to soar. God is going to enable us to be lifted up and to, to go forward in a way that carries us in directions we would have never known otherwise. But those who wait for the Lord shall run and not be weary. Right? When we are actively hoping and, and being stretched in the direction of God, then, then we're not going to be weary. We're going to be able to run. And those who wait for the Lord shall walk and not be faint. Right? Faint means feeling weak and unable to, to put one foot in front of the other. But no, those who wait, those who have an active hope in God are going to have strength. They're going to soar like eagles. Are gonna, they're going to run and they're going to walk and they're not going to feel faint or weary. You see where I'm going with this? That if we are willing to live an active hope and shape our lives around the things that are going to most closely connect us to God, it means that we can, we can trust and have confidence that our future, the direction where we are going, right, is going to be led by God and that we can go with confidence and with strength. Now, what does that mean practically for us? That means that each week we have encouraged you to think about your own faith direction. Now, the, uh, the one I have is from a previous week when it was blue, but you all have an orange one today. So I want you to take that out. I want you to take a look at it. Now, maybe you have yours that you've been filling out each week. Uh, maybe yours is already complete and it's at home. It's maybe hanging on your refrigerator or sitting on your desk or somewhere to remind you. Or maybe you're still pondering and considering what it is that, that, that you might do to prioritize your physical, uh, spiritual health like we would our physical health. Right? Maybe you're still pondering that. But what I want to encourage you to do today, knowing that when we live an active hope in God, when we wait for the Lord, when we trust that God is going to lead us in, in new direction, that, that God is going to, 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 to move us, guide us forward, to, to reach our goals and to live our dreams. And ultimately... To live a life of love, 
right, love, then that means we have to have a plan. And I shared in my, my, my weekly reflection on Thursday through the email that goes out. And if you don't get that email and would like to, usually we give um, information that will, um, that will help to, to prepare us for worship. And we can um, get you signed in on that. Um, but I, I said in that that when, when our daughter was born almost 17 years ago, my mother-in-law at probably a moment when I was feeling very lost and confused and uncertain about what it means to parent and to uh, live with a baby, um, she said it's always best to have a plan. Always best to have a plan because if you don't have a plan, then, then you're going to feel more lost than you would have otherwise. However, it's a good chance that when you make your plan, it's going to change. And that's okay. It's better to have a plan. Now, we saw that in early worship, um, the most um, effective object lesson I've never been in charge of, and that was that we had a plan for Holy Communion, like we do today in here, and the power went out. So as I was proclaiming the, the good news of forgiveness in Jesus, which, hallelujah for that, uh, the power went out. So we had to figure out how to do it. And guess what? We came up with a new plan. But we had a plan. So I want to say to you today, as I round out uh, this message and this reflection on the direction of our lives, it is always better to have a plan. So if for some reason today you hadn't come up with a plan yet, I really encourage you to make a plan. Without a plan, we don't really know where we're going at all. With a plan, it gives us some direction and we know a little bit of how we're going to be guided and then we can adapt it and change and we don't have to feel guilty if it does change. But the plan is around worship and prayer, around study and serving and giving. These are spiritual practices that are central to our life with God. And I would like for each of us to have a plan of how we're going to engage these, how we're going to live with an act of hope, and how these things are going to help us do that. To connect with God, to live our faith, to know where we're going and how we're going to get there, but we need to have a plan. So, as I promised in my correspondence last week, I'm going to tell you what my plan is. The other part of having a good plan is that you also have a person with whom you're accountable to it. It's important to have somebody. Maybe, maybe your spouse is that person for you, and maybe they're not, and that is okay. But maybe you have a good friend or uh, someone who you communicate with on uh, social media or... Uh, through email, share your plan with someone else and check in with one another about it. So I'm going to share my plan and you can ask me about it later. Ask me how it's going. How is that going, Pastor Amy? So this is my plan and then I'm going to round it out. Okay, so my plan is worship and prayer. Okay, I know you're thinking you're at worship because <laughs> you lead worship. But I want to say to you, worship is important to me. It always has been. And when I wasn't serving a local church for five years, which hasn't been too many years because I've, you know, well over 20 years uh, in ministry, um, those five years that I wasn't serving a local church, my family regularly was a part of worship. Um, pretty much every week. Um, worship is important to me. Uh, so while I know I have to be here because it's my job, it is important to me. Um, so, weekly worship is important to me. Um, I will extend uh, prayer, um, which I do daily anyway, but one particular goal that I have for myself is that I'm going to do daily gratitude. Now, I have, I have bought um, 
something that I hope will help to encourage me. And maybe this is something you can do as well. I found this um, awesome little book at Barnes & Noble. Um, it's small. It doesn't make me feel like I have to write a book every day. Um, but this is going to be my gratitude book for my daily prayers of gratitude. And I love it. It's um, a book that um, is connected to Morgan Harper Nichols. She's a beautiful writer, creative thinker, poet, um, encourager. I follow her on Instagram, and I love what this book says. Note to self, you can do this. You can do this. So this is going to be my gratitude, daily gratitude book. So worship and prayer. Now, I've mentioned it in previous weeks, but I am reading or listening to the Gospel of Luke. And I started that at Christmas time, um, Advent and Christmas, when we started hearing that birth narrative. I'm carrying it forward, and my goal is that I will um, engage five chapters a week with the Gospel of Luke. And once I'm done with Luke, I will go directly into Acts. So that is a Luke-Acts uh, goal for me. Um, now, I haven't mapped it out, and I haven't calculated five chapters a week. How long will that take me? Um, I'll get back to you on that. I haven't done that. Um, but I will because I want, I want to have a goal for myself of when that should, when, when I can see a, a terminus on that. Um, serving and giving um, vocationally, I've given my life to that. That's what I do. That's my heart. That's my calling. Um, but it's more than just a job for me. Um, I give. I'm committed to giving. Um, I give uh, to the church, um, my tithe. I give to uh, financially to other organizations. Um, I give of my time. One of the ways that I'm committing to doing that is I am on the board of uh, Greater Hickory Cooperative Christian Ministries. And I give my time not only at board meetings, but I give my time working um, with their team to help connect churches to GHCCM. So I, I serve in that way outside of my role. And that is what is on, that's, that's what's on my plan. Right? This is not to be complicated, make it simple, but make a plan for, for, so that you have those mile markers to help give you direction so that you're able to say, where am I going and how, how will I get there? This plan will help you accomplish that. So make space for God. Make space for God. Prioritize your spiritual health like you would your physical health. And be encouraged that when we wait for the Lord, the Lord is there. God is with us. And God will give us strength. God will help us to soar like eagles. God will help us to run and to walk and to not be weary or faint. God will help us go forward. And it doesn't have to be complicated. And when we are able to do that, we're going to know more deeply, more profoundly, and more certainly that God loves us, that God forgives us, and that God extends grace to each and every one of us. And we're going to have an opportunity today. Maybe communion can be a part of your plan. Maybe communion is something that is really connects with your heart, right? That sacrament, that, that special. We're going to give you the opportunity to experience communion. Maybe your plan could include, I want to make sure I am at St. Luke's or, uh, or somewhere once a month where I can take communion. And we offer communion every first Sunday. That'd be a great thing to add to your plan. That I want to worship and take communion at least once a month. And I can do that with St. Luke's. And we're going to give you that opportunity. So think about the simple things, but make a plan. Because if we don't have a plan, we really won't know where we're going. And we won't have the things that are going to help us to get there. It doesn't have to be complicated. Let me share with you one um, beautiful word from Mary Oliver, a poet, um, a prophet maybe, even. Her poem, Praying, says this. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. 
It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice can speak. May we be people who wait for the Lord and have trust and confidence in where we are going with God. Amen. We're going to take just a moment this morning to share together in how we prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. I'm going to extend to you an invitation and then I'm going to invite you to offer a prayer, a prayer of confession, which gives us the opportunity to say to God, I humble myself before you, knowing that I am not perfect and it is okay. You love me when I can ask for your forgiveness. So now I want to invite you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God hears our prayers and receives our words of confession. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And this proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. May the Lord be with you and also with you. May we lift up our hearts to the Lord and give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all your company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and your Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, 
And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And, God, and all God's people said, Amen. So I want to invite all of you to come to share in Holy Communion. For us, that means that if you are here and open to receiving God's grace in Jesus Christ, then you are welcome at the table. We will offer a piece of bread to you. You may receive that bread and, and eat that bread, and then you may take a cup and receive that cup, and then you may put your cup in the basket that's in front of you. So as we uh, open our hearts and join our lives, uh, we will do that through communion. I'm going to ask our servers to come forward uh, so that we can serve them first, and then our ushers will guide you as you come for communion today. The table has been prepared.
you would please, if you're able, stand, and I invite you to join us in our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, uh, which I think is a perfect hymn to close out this sermon series. gathering this afternoon at three o'clock remind your family your friends your neighbors or come out and be a part of it there's always something that we can learn new um, to help others and in our church and in our community also we will gather for lunch in the administration building for our lunch and learn directly after worship um, we would love for you to stay if you're new if you're new ish and if you're hungry we have enough for a handful of you. Um, come and be a part of that um, as well. So go today with an active hope and make a plan to grow in your spiritual life and to know more deeply our God who loves us and forgives us and extends us grace. Go in peace. Amen.